Frau was my life and her cobalt color like a knife. Fitness was my goal and hell the cobalt hood. All the tower and trees didn't matter anymore. Now the cobalt has come to the door. Teammates chatter about the dream. Nothing anymore is the same. Hope is in law school. Now the vaccine is all good. For me, the most important aspect of today's event is the fact that we get to acknowledge the work of our young people. In what has been a very, very challenging couple of years living with the COVID pandemic, there has been an acute rise in the number of people presenting with mental health issues since the lockdown and the subsequent return to school. Pupils and staff mental health and wellbeing at St Columns has been a focus over the course of the last two years and it will continue to remain a priority for us as we continue the journey of living through the virus. St Columns has been very fortuitous to have been involved in the Creative Schools programme for a number of years now. And it is our engagement in, in such initiatives uh, that help enrich the lives of our young people. It helps them to build their confidence and their self-esteem and it encourages them to take risks in their learning. The programme over the last two years in particular has given our students opportunities to work with professionals from a range of creative backgrounds and cultures which they wouldn't otherwise have had the opportunity to experience. It has been inspirational to witness how they have channeled their experiences of the pandemic and lockdown into poetry, photography and music. There is no doubt about the immense benefits of the programme for young people and I am very, very proud of you and all you have achieved over the last year. Thank you, Ursula. And can I thank Mr. Walsh and your Board of Governors here at St. Columns for the invitation to come and uh, to recognise and acknowledge what has been a, a tremendous achievement for the young people here. I know Corey, when he spoke about his poem, talked about how football was very much his life. I can identify with that at school. I was at Laurel Hill uh, High School, not far from here, and uh, football was what drove me to get uh, into school, and I think it drove the teachers to get me into the team so that I got, got out early to play in the football matches. And so football was hugely important to me and, and helped me to make sure I kept attending. And, and there's no doubt this programme, in terms of uh, what was behind it, um, has helped to encourage people uh, in terms of their own attendance at schools. We know um, that uh, arts can actually help stimulate so many other aspects of learning. Uh, and I, I sit in three boards of governors, two primary schools, one secondary school, and indeed yesterday was recruiting some teachers uh, in the afternoon. And part of the discussion was around um, the arts and what more we can do in schools to incorporate the arts, um, whether that's through the photography, poetry, um, and drama, uh, and all of that can help stimulate other aspects of learning um, across the different subjects that they study. Um, but I, I want to just thank those that have been involved, uh, both within our education system uh, and to pay tribute to our schools and the work that you do, and um, to uh, those involved in the Arts Council um, for their support in this project, of course within our own executive office in terms of urban villages and the work um, that officials have been doing. Uh, and that is a, a joined up approach and um, sometimes you look on and think government doesn't really talk to different aspects of it but there's a lot of really good work that goes on behind the scenes and this is a project that shows how that collaboration has really worked. Uh, let me thank um, Marie O'Donoghue as well um, who I know has been a driving force behind this particular project and just acknowledge her in the way that others have. <laughs> Adrian, and look, this chapter, the past year after Harry here, and she just had a rash and charm to know that I knew it could be you, and she was on first day. The times that shape us. Now, how appropriate is that? The times that shape us. And I had the pleasure of getting a few minutes there to scan through the, the book. And you really have captured what I think has been a really formative period in all of our lives, whether you're a wee bit older like myself or still having the joy of a full life hopefully in front of you uh, in the form of the young people who have contributed to the book here. 
you've been living through, we've been living through what I suppose can only really be described as an epoch-making period of our history. And we've come through many, many formative experiences over the last hundred and more years, but COVID and the last near two years have been something remarkable. I hope in many ways none of us ever have to live through it again, and I hope you never have to live through anything like this again. But when you live through challenging periods like that, it's really important to, uh, to record it, to catalogue it, to remember it. Agus istaharu wor gudj sauliakta, agus krahia, agus maknu, an an krusak shaw. So this anthology has captured your reflections, your imagination, how you have grappled with the period that we've come through, and you've said something about it. And I get a real sense from the, uh, the pictorial images and the, uh, the writings, and then listening to the, the drums at the beginning here, that it's all about going forward. It's all about looking forward into what can still be shaped. And I think it takes a really special area and a special community a special school and special teachers to reflect on the importance of doing that. But then it also takes special young people to contribute to this kind of a project. So I think you should all be very, very proud of yourselves and what you've achieved. Yeah.